is the after share. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to today's webcast. Um, it's a really happy day for me. I have very special people here, uh, and they're going to talk to us uh, and tell us about how to be the designer that the world wants. Uh, along with me, I have in the studio uh, Vikas Satwalekar. Uh, Vikas yes. is um, a very dear friend, a yeah. communication designer, and has also been the director of NID yeah. for 11 years. Um, Satish Gokhale. Hi. Satish is one of the most celebrated product designers, and the last I heard, uh, he had 49 patents. 59. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 59 patents uh, in product design. That's amazing, and we're really lucky to have you here, okay. Satish, to hear from you. And Claudio. Uh, Claudio is an architect designer, uh, an interaction designer, and an academician. Uh, Claudio is currently the head of academics at Pearl Academy, and so I welcome all of you. Uh, for those of you who have uh, come in, uh, you can ask questions by leaving your comments in the comment box, and we'll ask the questions uh, to the panel. Again, the, the theme of today is how to be the designer that the world wants. Um, I'm going to be asking the questions, and uh, you can pass it on to the next person or we can all talk together. Um, one of the things that young people think about uh, today uh, is that uh, is design a real career? I mean, can you make uh, money, get jobs, um, or is it something which is just a soft profession if you don't get admission into other areas? Um, maybe Satish, I can see you're smiling. You can take that. Hmm. No, I think uh, design as a profession now is really stable in India. There was a time obviously nobody wanted design, but as a designer it was a big struggle, but I think that things have changed now. Industry has realized the importance of design. And design, I think you can do a lot of different stuff now. I mean, that's important now. You know, when NID started, in with our first postgraduate graduate program in seventy. There were 30 students who applied. None of them knew what design was. But they were all adventurers with a passion to do something. They all ended up with a design profession, but as entrepreneurs because no industry was there mm. to yeah. take them. Today, as you said, things are different. Correct, correct. And I think that is what has happened from 1970 to today. And it's something terrifically positive. Claudio, do you want to add an international perspective? So you've been in India now for two years. So uh, do you see the opportunities in the design, in design yeah, sure. or design industry? Uh, you were mentioning that uh, you were telling that I have a background in architecture and design. So I think that there's a common ground in design, that is the ability of understanding how to transform an idea into some kind of form, and whether this is uh, into a real product or a communication or a item for the, for the fashion piece. So when I speak about design, it's a very broad term. And I think that I like also the approach that is looking not too much to this vertical specializations as a starting point. So especially for the UG, what you're looking at uh, is to bring this kind of culture of what design is in general, and then to slowly go into a, a much more detailed and specialization. So I think that that approach uh, gives a lot of flexibility also in the, in the market in the sense that uh, if you have a good basic and an understanding of what design means uh, and what is the attitude the approach to work it, uh, then it's very easy later on to specialize and to go in the specific fields. Good. Coming coming from what Pika said, I mean, you talked about the first batch. Yeah. I joined NID not knowing what design is yes. in the 80s. It's true. <laughs> it's true. So we are all confused. So <laughs> it was very interesting. I just knew design had to something to do with doing it with your own hands. And I think I loved it and just got in. So Satish, what if you hadn't studied design? Uh, there are many people who are designers uh, without a design education. What in a design education, d does a design education prepare you to be I'm a designer? Hmm. Interesting. I think very important what an institute taught us. Let's say I'm from an ID. Hmm. They taught us how to think differently. Hmm. An ID also taught us to be open. An ID also taught us to 
act as a catalyst with other team members. I think NID taught us to be team members and work as a team. I think that was very important and designers have to work as a team. Now you can't work in isolation anymore. As a and team with other designers? Other, or other, other professions. professions. It could be Super. a yeah. sociologist, it could be an engineer, a chemical engineer or an electronics person. Super. So, you know, designer has a very important role to play as a catalyst. And you can actually drive the whole product think being a catalyst. A, think of it as a conductor in an symphony yeah. orchestra. Yeah. You have so many different instruments. But can you them. conduct without going to a design school I or is it better to... It's mm. better because I think it's very important to have that foundation mm. as to what is design. You know, I think that education the design institutes give. I think that's, that's very important, I think. So you talked about, sorry, um, about have working with people. Can you tell us that um, wh what do you have as a setup? Is um, sometimes I don't know. Design houses are two people setups or thirteen people. What so what is what does over the last thirty happen? years? What we've done is we've got our own team, you know, which has got designers, engineers, program managers. You hire engineers and also okay. also, mm -hmm. but over a period we have actually built in associates. Mm -hmm. So we get the right brain on the project required. Okay. So instead of hiring and building a big company. We get the people on job as and when required. You know, otherwise, if I don't give the right job to the right person every day, he's going to leave. And he'll be unproductive also. So, and that's the way we work today. We've got a good set of associates now. And how many associates do you work with? We've got over now 12 or 15 associates. So, the best brains in electronics, the best brains in mechanical engineering, for example, polymers. So, that is our business model, how we work. So, it works better. Uh, Vikas, um, since I think you, since you worked in the area of communication design, mm -hmm. and did you study design also? Yes, very much so. <laughs> I mean, design and communication. <laughs> 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 huh. yes, no, did, did you study? Huh? I did. Mm -hmm. But you know what I did, and I think that's something which is very wonderful about what Pearl is trying to do. I did literature before I came to design. But it was knowing that I wanted to do design that I first went to literature. Mm -hmm. Because I thought that maybe it's important to understand the human mind a little better, to go into the mind of writers. And I was very lucky. I went to college, I did my degree, then I came to the National Institute as a student, and then did my whole program of design and then went off to other places. Okay. Claudio, we heard Satish talking about um, what is design and the design approach or design attitude. Um, what have what do you have in your curriculum, or do you have in anything <laughs> in your curriculum that uh, addresses this? How do you address that? Okay, that's a very very nice question. The curriculum, you are meaning what you are doing. That's now, right, at, at Pearl. Pearl. Yes. Now, yes. So, uh, I think that first of all, we have gone in the last year into a certain kind of revision and hmm. update of the curriculum because uh, it's very important to be able to cope with, with, with what is going on around us. Uh, and uh, uh, what we need is flexibility. So be able, again, to incorporate what is happening in the industry, in the curriculum itself, uh, while it's going. So a too much rigid curriculum doesn't work very well. And so we are bringing this more modularity approach so that we can incorporate these inputs. Uh, then as any, probably, especially the UG uh, curriculum, the idea is to make a path that is progressive. So the first year is mostly getting students aware about what design is, uh, but uh, through the hands, exper experimenting, experiencing, so it's not, in, it's not really in a theoretical way, but more like getting a sense of what design is through exposure to, again, the different aspect of design in general. Then the first year is mostly getting into the fundamentals of specific disciplines. So if the students have chosen communication, there are some basic aspects around communication to be learned, so layout, color, typography, for instance. They say the third year is mostly uh, as soon as the students have got a little bit of sense of independence in their, in their work or also position is like uh, throwing them in, a, in the real context and so it's mostly a year of exposure. Exposure means also playing a little bit with the boundaries, with the comfort zone, the sense you, they think that maybe they have got uh, some basic understanding, mm -hmm. but it's important then to cope it and to 
to work with other and to test it. So there are three different ways of exposing. Uh, one is uh, some activities, mostly project-based, uh, in which we are asking students to be, to, to work uh, in a cross-disciplinary group, uh, so not, not necessarily inside their classes with their own like uh, discipline, but also combining, for instance, interior designers with communication designers, maybe with interaction design in a global project. So that's a type of exposure in which uh, you are not working anymore in isolation in your own uh, domain, but you have to, like uh, we were saying before, being able to play your role in a, within a different, uh, mm. different perspective. Uh, second aspect is uh, important to work in collaboration with the industry. So this kind of cross discipline activity, the aim and what we are working on is uh, to have some briefs that are coming from the industry. So working in collaboration with them. So it's more like simulating a studio activity like any design studio does. And also compensating maybe the, the, the competencies that are not there with the, the support of external professional and mm. of uh, uh, <coughs> the industry itself. Uh, third element is, uh, again, we are thinking that in a global world uh, we have to be exposed to international perspective. This is a very big debate because when you are speaking about this, there is uh, some kind of resistance of thinking, OK, we are speaking about globalization in, in, in terms of uh, everybody having the same global mm -hmm. mindset. Mm -hmm. And it's not what we are looking at. So we are looking at uh, whenever is the approach of the students, uh, whether this is very local or very global, the importance of looking to, through other lenses to be able to get and to discover what in other places things happen, how they work, uh, is very important, very formative. So our way of looking at it is like to provide this uh, international exposure as a, as a way of opening a bit the mind. Uh, again, that is all the, what is happening in the third year. And the fourth year is that bringing the things together. At that point, students would have a different way of testing his own yeah. abilities. Again, one other aspect is that we don't think that if you're doing a four-year pathway, then everybody goes out like uh, the same. But again, this path uh, is also looking to how much uh, a person is different from the other, what are the talents that uh, they can develop and, uh, and apply. So with an understanding of industry, understanding of what is required from the market, and then applying to a final project. So that is a very progressive uh, pathway that has, again, these three dimension, industry exposure, cross-disciplinary activity, international exposure. So maybe let me take it from there. The questions have started coming in, but I have, oh, you want to add something? One some? small yeah, please, point please. which I wanted to, I think he's talked about the holistic approach. Hmm. I still think you have to talk about the student. Okay. And to me it seems that everyone today is banding around with the word creativity. <laughs> yeah. But every person on the road is creative. Hmm. The question is, what is the bandwidth of creativity? Hmm. And I think, what does an institution, a design institution do? A design institution helps a student understand his level of bandwidth and be able to operate within Correct. that level Correct. to Very the well best said. of his or her ability. That is what I call design education, with a capital E, not design training. And I think I make the differentiation hmm. here because Creativity is linked up with passion, with adaptability, and most important, with the attitudinal mind. How do you change attitudes in mind? So can I ask you a question? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> because I loved what you said. But my question is that if creativity has to do with attitudes, it has to do with passions, is that bandwidth fixed? Or... Can it be perfect? Yeah, that's, that's my question. In my view, again, that's a that's something you start within those five years or four years when you're there. You have let's say an X bandwidth, but that bandwidth has been given to you, or you understood it that this is my area of excellence at that particular moment of time. But when I go out and interact with industry, my bandwidth will obviously increase because I will be constantly absorbing. If I have passion for some learning, I will absorb. The moment I absorb, the bandwidth becomes wider. 
And I think that is what learning is all about. And in a sense, really, we are all learners all our life. So therefore, there is, yeah. I don't think there yeah. is. Yeah, absolutely. Super. So that's Super. Super. Yeah, because I believe that uh, based on the context, based on the environment, and based on the person's mindset and approach, uh, one can really find areas where you can stretch yourself or stretch Correct. that bandwidth. So it's elastic. Mm, yeah, super. It's elastic. Super. And uh, you know, you can actually limit or break away from there. You know, depends on each individual then. And how much you want to learn. You know, the question is once you ask me to talk. Mommy, uh, please, no, please, one, please, one please. Little <laughs> because I st in an educational institute, if you're talking of international, you must also talk about evaluation. Hmm. How does evaluation help a student hmm. grow? Hmm. And I think the important thing in evaluation is not checking somebody against somebody else, but against what you were six months ago yeah. and what you are today. That's correct. That, I think, is learning. So please Super. keep it. Absolutely. Mm. Um, just there's a question uh, that has come in, so I'm just going to take that. Like Claudio said, um, Pearl is offering uh, a pathway of four-year diplomas for all its design fields. Uh, the business and media uh, courses are three years, but all the design courses are four-year, the one-year foundation, uh, and then the three years after that. Uh, at the end of four years, the student gets a professional diploma uh, and is ready to go out into the industry. Side-by-side uh, -side students who want to study further, or we encourage all students uh, to do an IGNU distance learning degree along with us. Um, in the, sub the list of subjects are available on the, on the website and this makes you uh, eligible to study further uh, mm -hmm. in yes, India right. also. Okay. Uh, here's a question and I think the question is for you. It's Sakshi Wankade says, Pearl Academy is fashion dominated. I, c I can also help in that answer. <laughs> does, <laughs> does it provide the same exploration and scope for communication design. Yes, sure. Now, I think that this was the observation that I had when I came uh, here. So I realized that uh, Pearl is very well known all around India, mostly connected to fashion. Uh, there are different reasons, obviously, because again, it's a long history and a long mm -hmm. pathway and so on. But uh, I think that uh, even like uh, we are speaking about a different set of uh, teachers, uh, their philosophy, the approach is the same. So uh, communication or product design, so they have all very, very, very focused teams uh, and very focused uh, perspectives. And again, the element that we are working on in terms of the curriculum is very homogeneous in terms of uh, the way in which are approaching the experience of the students. So there is no like comparison in terms of the specificity of the discipline, but this is comparison in terms of approach. So there is one pearl that is working in an holistic manner, and then, then that is leveraging then the different expertise. So I, I would not be worried about whether a communication program within an institution is very well renowned for, for fashion, because there is a very specificity in, the, in, in all the specific fields. Cool. There are also, in, in some cases, some domains that are emergent, so in which the programs are newer, and sometimes, again, I know that people are saying, okay, if it's a curriculum there for 20 years, maybe there is certain stability. Oh. But on the other side, on when we are designing a new curriculum, like for instance, we have, have reviewed uh, the, the communication one in the, the last uh, couple of years. Uh, normally, the new curriculum is better leverage the experience that we have uh, developed in the, in the previous one. Yeah. So the new curriculum is always, so to say, more open, mm -hmm. more ready, more contemporary. And so we are putting a lot of energy in that. So I would generally say that uh, communication design is a very good uh, choice in yeah. case. Uh, yeah. Mostly like okay. that. Uh, here's a question from Kavita. Um, maybe Satish, you can take that. It says, uh, she says, how important is industry exposure during a design course? Or is it important? Okay. I think it's extremely important. The reason is you study in a institute but what you study in industry is real life experiences mm -hmm. the time really crunches and it's so important I mean a program or a project what you're doing for three months you are expected to do that in 10 days in the industry and that's real world so I think at the early stage let's say in the third year exposing to the industry is extremely critical and important 
extremely important, I would say. I would encourage people to do more industry trainings, in fact. So when you say industry training, you mean like internships, internships or visits? Internships. Oh. Even visits do help. Hmm. Because visits actually open your whole perspective changes, saying that, oh, it can be done this way, you know, that kind of thing. The smell, the touch and feel of materials is important. Sure. The heat, the environment. Uh, if I can add, because I don't want to maybe what I said before is hmm. misunderstood, because hmm. I, I was saying that in the third year, there is a particular emphasis hmm. Hmm. on that. But that uh, doesn't mean that we are not looking so, so what kind of can wha what kind of industry exposure do you give students? Oh, there is a, there is a, there is different ways, but indeed also in the first year we have done projects uh, with yeah. the industry also in the in the first year. It's obvious that the kind of activity they are doing in the first or the second year is not the same that you can do when students are more mature or more uh, uh, develop more competencies. But we are often like uh, hosting, uh, uh, visiting uh, faculty professionals that are coming to present their case studies. We are inviting them for some critiques uh, when there is the, to be presented a work. And again, as I was saying, especially in the third and sometimes in the second year, we are also developing this conjunct project with the, with the industry. So it's a continuous collaboration yeah. that is scaled up, uh, uh, also in relation to what is the competence that students are developing, their ability also to understand. And again, from the third year on, on uh, they develop mostly a, a better maturity. But we are very eager also to integrate the aspect in the, in the, in the first mm. and the second year. You want to say no, something? I, I believe that, you know, industry training breaks your comfort zone. Yeah. And that's a major learning. You can't swim, you're thrown in the sea, and you're to survive. I think that training is what industry training actually does. And it's very important. So there's a question here directly related to that. It's Himanshu Jain who says, uh, is internship given by the college? The answer is yes, Himanshu. Uh, all students in their third year uh, go out for an industry internship, uh, which is arranged by the college. Some students work on a project and they find it themselves okay. also, uh, but all students get this industry exposure or experience. Um, there's a question here from Kumar. Um, it says, sir, so that means it's not for me. It says, uh, sir, I have admission in engineering, but I want to do design. Can you advise me about the future? We Which part of the country does he come from? I don't know. I think, <laughs> essentially, I think huh. we sh I'll, uh, uh, Satish and I could give our email addresses. Maybe they yeah. <laughs> that's no, I think, think we can do. Probably yeah. can't do it. Only. Engineering and design goes hand in hand. It's mm -hmm. very important, I think. You know, but the kind of products he would get into is very different. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of lifestyle kind of products, he might get into medical products or capital equipment or hardcore where basic fundamentals of engineering can be utilized. So I will always recommend he should do design without forgetting the principles of engineering. Please tell, uh, just talk about that engineering, uh, the, the medical equipment you did, because I think in a sense that highlights Absolutely. what you're talking about. So I, I think being an engineer, a lot of times your uh, vision is narrowed down, hmm. whereas, yeah, it does, it does. Really? You know, because you think only that it can be done only in one way, whereas a design helps you to think in a very radical different way. Most of our projects, we actually question basic engineering principles. Can't it be done in other way? So a lot of work is happening in disruptive innovation. We just worked on a project where, you know, it's a breast scanner and something which requires mammography and is very expensive. That's why women don't go because of the oh. pain and the humility also. It costs 150 rupees and it just takes four minutes today. Wow. So that's something which changes. I mean, there are several examples. We question <coughs> prior art. I think we question engineers saying that why is it done this way? Oh, because somebody else has done it. So we always try and think differently and design helps you to think differently, I think. Very important. Super. Uh, here's a question um, from Kavya, Kavya Bege. Uh, she says, how instrumental is Pearl Academy and how does Pearl Academy provide the designers that the world wants? Who's going to do that? <laughs> Somebody from Pearl. <laughs> Somebody uh, who's behind. Who's that? Claudio? Okay. So maybe I, can I start first? Uh, absolutely. Uh, give you a little bit of time to think. Uh, so, Kavya, I think one of the things that we've been discussing um, is that um, 
one needs to also understand that the designer or the student who comes in say in 2017 is going to go out and be a designer in 2021. Uh, so there's a lot of responsibility and a lot of research, a lot of industry integration and in actually understanding what the trends are going to be and what are the skills that uh, the student needs to have in 2021 because everything is changing all the time. Technology is changing all the time. Uh, the products that we use is changing all the time. What we have, your artificial intelligence, your virtual reality, everything is changing all the time. So it's, it's not, in my opinion, the pure skill. It's also the ability to learn, the ability yeah. to identify uh, what is the right information, uh, where can one uh, learn more and to continuously be able to learn, understand the customer, empathize with the customer and learn yeah. and apply uh, what it is because everything is changing. So the attempt really at Pearl Academy is um, always to be in touch with what is happening out there today and through, the, through our industry partners in the future uh, so that our students are equipped to be continuous learners in the area of design. But Claudia is going to give you the <laughs> real answer. I'm laughing because I, I huh. was struggling to, to finding a, a, a simple answer, but I think that you, 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 you told very well. So oh, sorry, Claudia. there's a message here, Claudio, for you. For me, personal message. Yeah, so Ranjana Satwalekar is saying Claudio can barely be heard. <laughs> we, so Ranjana had to come. <laughs> so you have to talk a little louder. Okay, I can, I can speak loudly. Yes. But I hope that the microphone is, is working. So they have a, a little bit of a low voice. <laughs> no, I was thinking that summarizing what Nandita has told, I think, very, very, very clearly, that is this ability of learning to learn. Yeah. Uh, I think that is typically of any creative uh, industry, the fact that uh, you're asked uh, in the different steps uh, also in the career to tackle or to be confronted with new problems uh, with aspects that you didn't know before. That is typical of uh, a design career. So that's uh, what we are looking after very, very, very clearly. Uh, also summarizing other aspe aspects that uh, we were speaking about. Uh, on one side that is understanding yourself, uh, so understanding what is the creative part, uh, but also what is the technical part uh, that you are able to, to manage. Uh, the second layer is uh, not only enough to understand, uh, to, to be exposed to that creativity, but also to apply a systematic approach, to understand, to control and to manage it. And third, as we were saying before, to be open to understand the system, the area in which we will apply, because again, we were speaking about communication is a very open, very broad uh, world, but at the end, which are, uh, which are the stakeholders, which are the typical modality of work, what is the yeah. difference, what is the market looking at. So understanding what is the system in which uh, communication is uh, entering, is working, is very important. So we are playing on these three different mechanisms. So making people aware about their ability, providing a structural approach in order to be able to manage and to control and to, to work uh, around that ability and understanding what is the system in which you will then work in the future. So it's flexible also. Let me just yeah. add some. Yes, please. I, I, I think there is another aspect which I think we have not touched upon, which is learning from each other. Mm. I right. think um, there's a great deal of learning between students mm. and students. Yeah. Yeah. And I think hopefully also between students of one discipline to students of another discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Because this concept of cross-ventilation, what Gandhiji talks about, let my doors and windows be open so that I can, you know, and need not be swept away by the idea. But I think essentially be influenced, looked at is important. And I believe there can be projects which can work towards that thing. One of the things which was, I idealistic and it f happened for about 15 20 years at NID was that they were they would take a project where six, 60 70 students from different disciplines would work on that project Correct. for a client and actually the project was to be setting up an exhibition in Delhi all 70 of them would be, be in Delhi mm -hmm. yeah we all were part of that exactly. uh, this now i think that is learning. learning with a difference because you are learning the bandwidth which I talked about. You're already making it broader within Correct. an educational institution. And I think maybe Pearl should look at that 
And so, then you mentioned yeah. it. Yeah, yes. And I think that is yeah. a fantastic idea. So I think that and it helps to cross pollinate. Yes. I think it's very important. So, uh, um, Claudio is smiling. Uh, but in the curriculum that we have right now at Pearl, uh, it's modular. And you can always jump in if I'm not saying it right. And uh, there are one third of the modules um, which are similar across all the courses. So if there is a module in social design, uh, students from product design and students from communication design That's and good. students from interior and spatial design are all studying that. So that is really the space where the industry comes in with a project. And we can have students from all different courses yeah. uh, coming in there, working together uh, and um, learning from each other. Did I say it right? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I want to say one more thing, sorry, since <laughs> I have the, the main mic. Um, this actually made me think, this is to Kavya's question, that uh, how, what is Pearl doing? And it reminded me of uh, where we were earlier on um, in a room with 300 of our faculty. Mm -hmm. And the question that I asked there is that how many of you have been through some learning or are engaged in some learning or some course mm -hmm. over the last year? And I think more than 95% of yeah. the people in the room stood up. Mm -hmm. So truly, if as an organization, as a college, if the emphasis is that True. faculty also have to continue to be mm -hmm. lifelong learners, faculty True. have to also continue to do internships with the industry, have to continue to learn. Uh, this is another way, I think, that mm. the, the learning mm, to learn yeah. or learning skills uh, flow in there. Okay. Um, Sorry, there are many questions. This one maybe, uh, because you can take, it says, Sir, what is the difference between a one-year course at, say, Arena and Mac or a four-year course in design at Pearl or at anywhere? Huh? Um, I do not know what the course is at that one-year course which they are talking about. Okay. But I can talk conceptually. Okay. I think a shorter program is basically to fine tune skills. your skills. Mm. A longer duration program is to fine tune your mind. Very and good. I think that is really what it is. That's the difference. Yeah. Super. Um, That's absolutely correct. It's just amazing. Yeah. Uh, Geetika Jain is asking, uh, is, it, oh, is it compulsory to enter an entrance exam? So Geetika, yes, the answer is yes. Um, it is compulsory to go through uh, the admission process as there is on the website. Uh, all the four-year and two-year courses have an entry, entrance exam uh, and an interview, but check the website depending on the course it is that you're interested in. Uh, there's another question which says, uh, what is the difference between, maybe you can take that, uh, it's Ar Aradhya Singh, fashion media communication and communication design. Okay, but then we are getting too much into the detail, but in a broader, in a broader sense, uh, communication design is uh, looking to all the different range of application of communication and with a the, with the focus on, uh, for instance, the advertising industry or publishing industry or any kind of industry that, so to say, is uh, leveraging the skills uh, of a communication design. Fashion media communication, as, again, as the title says, is an emphasis on fashion. So while the communication design is a broader perspective that is uh, looking to any kind of context to, apply, to be applied, and the fashion communication is focused specifically on fashion. And the media aspect is also the one that is uh, thinking about how you communicate fashion through a media, media being mass media, like television, or like new media, like uh, a web, and so on. So, it's a different kind of perspective. One is a little more specialistic in the mindset, uh, and the other is more broad. So you can clearly understand the difference uh, and depending also on what you're looking for. So if you're looking to, uh, uh, so to say, a curriculum that makes you ready to work in different fields, uh, in different contexts, then communication design is, again, the one that is coming. Uh, for that, if uh, you are very interested in the specific fashion industry, True. And then so that to apply and to understand uh, how to apply communication to that specific field, then fashion communication is the right uh, choice. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Gaurav Singh. He says, uh, can you tell me the difference between interior and spatial design and architecture? 
you want to take that again? Sorry. That is again architecture. In th the question speaks about architecture. Architecture, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, like how to do this? Very simple. Uh, okay. Uh, huh, that's a big question because I have an architectural so background. There's a very thin line between all of yeah. it now. It's a very thin line. Uh, except I no, think it's in, more in, architecture, in architecture, architecture is much more technical. Yeah. Uh, and they learn a lot yeah, to do yeah. with hard materials. Uh, whereas in then interior in and spatial design, one either one learns to work with but the is spaces. A, but the architect oh. also has to create the spaces for them. Yeah. Yes. So but is there is this one concept which is creation of spaces so yeah. for but a specific but purpose. But is the yeah. scale? Yeah. Right? Is the scale. Yeah. Scale. Okay. I think that is a matter of scale. So if you are an architect or study for architecture, among the differences that you can do, you can also learn to design interior spaces. But mostly you are learning how to make a building. Mm big building, a large building, a small building, so with all the technical component in order to, to make it. And so not only the design aspect, but also the technical, how the structure right. is, uh, is working and so on. So it's a little bit like uh, if you are comparing uh, uh, the product design to, to a, a more engineering Correct. perspective. You're, you're handling so you have to have that. In the interior design, there is an architectural component because whenever you are designing the layout, you have to understand how a wall stands, uh, where maybe the equipment has to be fixed or, or, or pass, uh, but not with the same level of complexity of an architecture. And then you are not studying how to design a skyscraper for, the, for That's correct. Right. correct. Okay. So Himanshu Sagar has a question. Uh, it's quite an interesting question. He says, uh, how important is it to be in a metro city? while studying design. Uh, so Himanshu, I think the way that I'm receiving that question and then I'll uh, pass it on because I think that uh, <laughs> is the, the way I'm receiving it really is um, for me uh, being, I don't know what the word metro city, but being in an environment where one has access to the industry which could be in yes. Pune, uh, where one has access to exhibitions, where one has access to conferences, uh, things that are Design going studios. on or so maybe like a more cosmopolitan city with the industry nearby is an advantage uh, all design is not in metro cities or uh, there's a lot of design in in Delhi in Bombay in Bangalore but a lot of design in Pune there's a lot of design in Ahmedabad also My God, Pune yeah. would feel very upset I'm saying Pune <laughs> if you, if it yeah. is not a metropolitan yeah. city meaning that it's you one <laughs> it's doesn't it's have a design, yeah, it's a design yeah so yeah. so uh, being where uh, designers are I think yeah. that possibly has an impact, but let me hand that over to you all. You know, my, my only reaction to that would be probably we have not still developed a program to teach design in places other than major cities. Mm. I think it's a very specialized program. I think we have not given it a serious thought. Mm. That's my immediate reaction. I don't know. That, mm. But that there is a need for it, I think... Yeah, it should, yeah. should be done. I think that there are colleges which are not in some of these design hubs. The struggle sometimes is uh, where do you find a teacher, where do you find good design yeah. teachers correct, who correct. are open to uh, staying in but Vijaywada or... But you know, this is what the NID is, uh, this know, is what the NID government did is wanting to do. Okay. For example, Vijaywada is one, mm -hmm. I think uh, Kurukshetra is another, the, the Indore or something somewhere is a third. They're trying to do something, but Not these talks there is one. always a problem and shortage of faculty. Correct. Of good faculty, because faculty... But all it depends fault. also on the individual. I mean, if, if you're in not in a metro, you can still be in touch with what is happening. Yeah. Exactly. And with today's day and age with information technology, I think that's not a problem at all. Okay, super. Uh, so here's a question uh, from Geetika Kumar. Uh, it says that if we're going to work in India, uh, is there any benefit of international exposure? I won't give that to you uh, because you may be biased. But uh, <laughs> is there any benefit of exposure to international concepts, uh, international faculty, international um, transfers, if at the end of the day we're going to work in India, as she says? India is a pretty large country, isn't it? <laughs> Very diverse. It's, uh, you know, it, it can be as... Uh, complex as yeah. New York, or it yeah. can be Absolutely. like a small village, in, yeah. you know, somewhere else. The likes and dislikes so change between the north and south. I think that, again, my concept of bandwidth hmm. is so important. Of 
course, I think uh, there is no doubt in my mind that all these in, uh, influences which should come in are extremely important. Do you think it helps to have international exposure? Uh, what What is I the difference it would make to a student's life? Okay, I'm, I'm bringing my, my experience. Okay, since I'm a foreigner and coming here, I, I don't have that cultural understanding of Indian culture, for instance, so I'm pretty much on, on the surface of the understanding. And so what I always stimulate in students, also my colleagues, is that can you uh, focus and explain or give him some visible access, access to what is your knowledge that is so complex, so diverse, but they don't get it. Mm. Okay? And I think this is a very good exercise. And if you're going abroad, mostly what is happening is that you have to understand what others are mm. doing, but you also have to be able to communicate to the other what you are doing. And this makes you a more clear mindset, yeah. more focus, more understanding also what you, uh, is your inner value. So my question is always, which are the assets uh, of being in an Indian culture, and how can this emerge and be, be managed in a, in a visible and a clear way? And I find sometimes some unclear answers. I think that uh, being in a context in which you are exposed uh, and you need, uh, again, to understand but also to report, to explain, to communicate, helps uh, bring some kind of clarity and, uh, in what you also you are doing daily. So it doesn't matter whether then your product uh, is a product that has an Indian touch but is for a global market Perfect. or if it's an Indian touch for a local market. Simply, I think that if you're getting that mindset, you're able to communicate to others in a more, like, so to say, holistic context, okay. uh, then also your product, your solution will be much clearer, more clean, more to the point. And any exposure is actually good. Yeah. That's, that's more any important. Any change or any exposure. Yeah. Or it, it actually makes tells you, you how good you are, maybe. Hmm. And makes you think the also. The point what he said is really important, of the, uh, you know, that whether it's a product with Indian... Uh, yeah, the context the is... context is important for whom are you designing. Yeah. The design is for specifics. It cannot be, there cannot be a design which is good Just for everybody. Just in general, yeah. yeah. There is nothing like that. There's an interesting question from Ajit Bhagat. Uh, he asks, uh, how do you know that you can become a designer? What are the attributes that an individual should possess in order to switch his or her career towards design. I will let, let both of you do that. How does one I know? Think one uh, simple word is you should have passion. I think that is your main driver. I think that's what I believe in. You know, if, if you have the passion, then only you can actually get into any profession, not just design, but... The passion for? Doing something with your own hands, thinking radically different. I think that's, that's very important. For questioning? Questioning prior rest, art. Yeah. Why is it done this way? Status you know, why not this? questioning status quo, yes, that why are we doing it this and way? And being is there a better way? Mm. The being touch curious. and feel, and I think it's very important there. Do you want Going to add something? In depth. In depth. Yeah. It's important. The passion is important, I think. Uh, what else is important? See, passion is important in all the professions, spark but in design is, yeah. spark that the spark. is also important. That, you know, very often we see people who are ordinary people like us, but somewhere down the line you see a spark. Identifying that spark is really what an institution does and to make it nurture and grow. So yeah. do that. So Ajit, I hope you got your answer. I think um, you need to be uh, inquisitive, curious, uh, challenge status quo, uh, ask questions, you want, must ask questions that why do we do this, do it this way, can yeah. we do it uh, in a better, better way, way. Mm. Uh, and also be passionate about everything you do and be willing to go in depth, in depth this, yeah. I think the designer is like a, the long haul a magician is and a god and everything put <laughs> together, um, but what I've seen really is that if you have that interest and if you want to do something, um, it's a great field because you can get totally absorbed in what you're doing. You start questioning, critiquing yourself. I think that's yeah. what amazing that could I be doing something better? Why am I doing it in this particular way? Can I with my own uh, make myself better and make my, my work better? So, you know, one small thing I'd like to add really 
is that these design conferences which take place, I particularly am very keen to go to this conference in Pune, mm. the Pune Design Puna, Puna PDF. Mm. Why am I so keen? Is essentially because I see about 70% of the people who are making presentations have been students of NID. They are doing such incredible work and s so much more than what I have ever dreamt of doing. And it gives me such great pride that I always say, don't call me there because I, my neck starts paining <laughs> just looking after these guys. It's Super. so beautiful. Super. Um, so Prerna beautiful. Bagai is asking that she wants to know more about product and lifestyle design. Maybe the two of you can take it together. So at Pearl, we have a course which is uh, uh, called product and lifestyle design okay. and it covers broadly two vari uh, yeah. two verticals uh, one is in the area of uh, accessories and smaller products and the other is slightly more is more industrial in nature yes. so um, what are what is the future in these areas you want to take it first okay i can i can explain a bit how this is built uh, about the course? About the course, okay. so that we can yeah. maybe figure yeah. out what, what is mm -hmm. the, the span of the course. So the reason of having two pathways, uh, one more uh, towards industrial products uh, and also maybe touching furniture or like products that have to be, to, uh, so to say, to, to be produced in, in an industrial way and the other to have some more we call like soft products mm -hmm. that uh, not only because of the scale but also because of the way in which people are approaching them and in the middle, we have also some overall concept of thinking about what is the experience of, of uh, people in relating with the products, uh, both uh, soft products and, and hard products, so to say. So we have uh, one pathway that is uh, permitting the student to focus more on one direction to the other, because this is what is happening outside in the market. In the market, we see that typically if you have a good product designer, you can touch different kind of uh, scales. Uh, but for getting more in the industrial, you have also to be able to cope more, to collaborate with the engineers, uh, like ex the example we were speaking before. In the other case, uh, the, in the soft product, is more uh, the complexity deeper in the production process is a, is a little bit less, uh, but it's very important to have a strong sensibility That's about right. aesthetics, uh, how this is going to, to be inserted in a, in a context, uh, which are the current languages that uh, are influencing the choice of people, and how these are also becomes also element of decoration or in, in, a, in a home yeah, setting. Yeah. So again, these are the two elements that have, till now we have seen as a, that, that are also the requirement of the market. So we are trying to provide both spectrum without, uh, again, uh, compromising one or the other. Yeah. To me, I think uh, what I feel is a lot of times lifestyle products, people are willing to pay for more. Hmm. You know, so they're design takes a slight backseat because you can take the flexibility of creating something in a small batch production you mean kind of aesthetics thing. aesthetics takes the... No, what, what aesthetics takes, is there in both. How does it take the backseat then? Oh. The kind of materials used, you know. All right. To me, design is for mass production. Whereas lifestyle products, you can make thousand, you know, okay. or, or even just hundred, mm -hmm. for example. So you have the liberty to use different material, different it's processes, which is not so for mass that, production. Yeah. yeah, it's not as risky yeah. as... Uh, Whereas design means every penny saved is a profit, eventually. Super. Uh, here's a question from Nidhi. Hi, Nidhi. Um, she's asking that after an undergraduate, uh, should a student first gain industry exposure by working or first do masters and then go out to work? Any, yeah. I think it's based, it is purely based on yeah. each individual. There are certain people who like that break. I personally feel a break is good because you get more maturity. Mm. You're exposed to the market and when you're doing a master's, you'll know what the market is going to demand. I personally believe a two-year working gap and then doing a master's is better. But there are two school of thought. So certain people Let's like the continuity. Hmm. There are schools which make it a requirement that they can only apply for a master's after two years of professional oh, work. That, that, yeah, some of them. Why? I think it's yeah. essentially because it helps you focus on what you want to actually do. Because as an as a undergraduate, you want to do 25 things. Yes. 
And all 25 things may not be possible to do in a span of two years of master. You focus, so you know <coughs> what direction you want to go, and then go into a profession. I think that's, yeah. that's why two years is minimum, I would recommend anyone. To go out and work in the Absolutely. Even if you want to start your own design office, yes. I think it's very important to work with somebody for First, two years. Yes. Learn at somebody's expense. I think that's very important. Okay, so here's a question uh, from Gaurav Kumar. Uh, he says, uh, is it better to work with a large company of design or better to work with a small design company? Hmm. See, so in a large I company, you're not doing the you entire product. Huh? Sorry, in a large company, hmm. you do the basic concept, then somebody takes over for yeah. the drawings and the manufacturing. In a small, in our, for example, in a company Are like us. Are you a us, small company or a large company? Yeah, we are, we are tiny, not even small. Okay. Yes. So tiny. what we do is, <laughs> the same designer takes the product from concept till the manufacturing. Wow. So he takes the entire responsibility. So the learning is much better with a smaller company. It's like working in a big corporation or a small office. It's the same, you know, it all depends on the individual's capacity. But in small offices, there's a lot of learning. Overall learning in a small office is better. That's what I... I wanted to say more the, or same, the same indeed. Uh, when I had the students that were in the, in the past were competent enough, and they wanted to be uh, exposed. Typically, they were complaining that if they went to, to work for a for a certain design studio, they were required only to make a mm, yeah. very skill-based activity and they didn't learn too much uh, the overall process. So the recommendation was always mm. go work for a startup or go for a small company in which, uh, again, you are very easily exposed to the entire process. But again, this depends on where you are in the maturity of your, of your path. Yeah, that's true. Okay, there's one more question that we'll take. Uh, this is from Linda, Linda Singh. Uh, she says, how does Pearl Academy help those students who want to be entrepreneurs? Can I? Excellent. Yes. Okay. Do that. So I, I, I'll Excellent. start that. Um, really, Linda, we have found that uh, within the first three years, uh, around 50% of our students uh, want uh, to either work uh, as entrepreneurs in a business of their own or uh, do something as a, a freelance sign. designer. That's a good yes, absolutely. For the profession. So yeah. we have been watching this trend for some time. So from mm -hmm. two years ago, every course has an entrepreneurship module in it. Uh, students also have modules in professional development where they learn how to negotiate, understand a brief, uh, work, conceptualize, and uh, work that way with the industry. And we have set up incubation centers uh, right now in our. Delhi NCR and Jaipur campus, Mumbai is slated for later this year, uh, where we provide a place, an office mm -hmm. for the registered people to come and sit, uh, access to the labs, oh, so uh, the 3D printer, the sewing machines, oh, the computers delighted. and everything, and financial and legal services on every Friday. Uh, the you. next phase, so this is what happened uh, over the last one year. So then the next phase I is to take on uh, formal mentorship from the industry and then look at uh, angel investors. Excellent. You should yeah. also look at somebody who will take people on for IP, for intellectual yes, property. Yes. I think that will be important. Yeah. So did you want to add anything to that? No, I think that was the... Okay. Yeah. I'm going to start winding up because it's... Uh, did you, you asked whether it's going to be five to seven minutes. Uh, it's... Our R is finishing right now. Uh, so this has been really interesting. I can tell you Pearl has a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Pearl lights all. Absolutely. So. No, we love it. Uh, this has been really interesting. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. There are many questions which haven't been answered. Uh, but we have our counselors uh, who will answer them or possibly have been answering them while we're talking also on Facebook. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, this is part of our series where we'd like to bring the best in the industry uh, and give young people, their families and society at large access uh, to the best in the industry uh, to ask questions. And I think that um, I'm seeing more and more in this digital world that uh, this is a very open uh, and happy way for us to interact and be able to get you across the world as the question may be. Watch out for some more. As I said, um, 
all questions will be answered. Um, I would like to just thank you again, Vikas. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, you Satish, and thank you, Claudio. Thank you, thank everybody. You.